Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here, and in this video, we're revisiting our review of the DJI Mavic Air 2. A couple weeks ago, we compared this drone's video footage with that of the Skydio 2, and we wanted to revisit the footage because one, we uploaded our video in 1080 resolution when this drone shoots at 4K, and also we noticed that the gimbal was a little bit shaky in our Mavic Air 2, so we went back to DJI and had the drone replaced. So in this video, producer Gunther Kirsch, who has had this drone for a while, is gonna talk through the footage that he shot and give you some advice as to how to fly a drone like this with the idea of filming in mind as well as how to best leverage this drone as an aerial camera and process that footage for sharing on places like YouTube. Please enjoy. Thanks, Norm. Yeah, I've had a little bit of experience with DJI drones over the years. I'm no expert, but I'll give everyone my two cents. While these small consumer drones are fantastic tools, they aren't without their limitations. Most notably, they are small and so are their cameras. This means very little light hits the sensor and you have to be careful about noise levels in your shadows, especially if you're trying to shoot at sunset or sunrise like I always am, and so should you. The difference between a bright day and sunset is, well, night and day. Because of this, I would recommend shooting in HDR most of the time. Though, be aware that HDR on the Mavic Air 2 is limited to 30p or 24p and auto exposure only. I found the auto exposure surpassingly good though, and it really helps extend the dynamic range of the scene. With most drones, I would prefer to shoot in 60 frames per second to get a more crisp image and something you can slow down in post. But the HDR on the Mavic is too good to not use. This is because we are working with that tiny little sensor. To get all the light and therefore detail and vibrance in the image, HDR is necessary for this tiny little sensor, in my opinion. If you want to shoot 60p, I would set the exposure lock to the brightest part of the scene and say goodbye to most of your shadow detail. You'll still get a nice cinematic image, but there won't be as much detail as there is with HDR. In practice, I flew with the ND16 attached to the camera. This was perfect for shooting around dusk and sunset. I found with this that HDR's auto exposure kept my shutter speed at around an 80th to a 1/100th of a second. I prefer a slightly quicker shutter speed than a 180 degree shutter angle for aerial cinematography. A uh, 180 shutter degree angle means that the shutter speed is basically twice as fast as the frame rate. So 24p is 148th of a second and 60p would be, yes, 120th of a second. With fast moving drones, there is such thing as too much motion blur. So keep your image crisp with a slightly faster shutter speed than normal. Also, if you're finding yourself shooting in broad daylight, you might need to bump up your ND. That's no problem though, because the Fly More kit comes with three ND options. Another limitation with these small single operator consumer drones is that you are both the pilot and the camera operator at the same time. And the only way you can pan the camera left and right is to pan the drone. This can definitely be tricky for beginning flyers and pretty disorienting even for me at times, but it's the only way to get beautiful panning shots. So practice a little before you jump into it. Also, if you want to tilt the camera while flying, you have to use DJI's tiny little spring-loaded wheel on the back left of the controller. With some practice, you can pull off some very fluid and cinematic tilts, like using a tilt to track a subject or to tilt up while the drone is moving downward. Again, practice is your friend here. The more, the better, and the smoother your shots will be. I would suggest practicing with a manual orbit shot. DJI has this built in, but I found it rarely works as subject tracking isn't reliable at all, at least in my experience. So find a subject with a clear 360 degree circular path around it, move the drone perpendicular to the subject and use the left joystick to keep the subject centered in the frame. If you do it correctly, it will result in the drone doing a perfect circle around the subject. Once you've perfected this move, move on to more tricky shots like tracking, panning, and tilting all at the same time. 
And when in doubt, don't ever hesitate to slap a stabilizer on your shot in post, as this will eliminate most unwanted jitters. Now in general, for aerial cinematography, I would just recommend to slow down. In most cases, I regret moving the drone too quickly. That's not to say there isn't a place for fast drone movements, but generally speaking, start slowly. With higher speeds, you are more likely to crash your precious drone, lose track of it, or have shaky and jerky footage. On that note, shoot continuous shots much longer than you think you need. Let them hang for at least 15 seconds. 30 is even better. That way, you have more shots to select and post and more wiggle room for sloppy flying. While flying, try to be diligent with your flight plan. 35 minutes feels like an hour once you're flying, but it's good to be efficient nonetheless. One easy way to do this is to shoot in reverse. If you do a slow tracking shot moving forward, when you finish, do a slow tracking shot in reverse of what you just did. If you pan up in one shot, reverse afterwards and pan down. This gives you so much more usable footage in post with not much more effort or battery life while flying. On that note, record your whole flight. Don't cut from shot to shot. That's a good way to accidentally not record a shot because you were too focused on flying. The drone is an incredible mechanical device that you can effortlessly travel in 3D space with. This is your biggest strength with a drone, so take advantage of that perspective. My biggest suggestion for getting beautiful cinematic shots is to use parallax to your advantage. Parallax is the perceived shift of the foreground to the background from the viewer's perspective. For example, you can fly by a tree in the foreground to reveal a beautiful background. You can go straight up to see a mountain appear in the background out of nowhere. pan around a subject to reveal a massive landscape around them. You notice I said the word reveal a few times. I keep that word in the back of my head while flying. You want to reveal to the audience what they rarely have the opportunity to see. Yeah, an aerial shot of a landscape is pretty, but it becomes much more cinematic if you reveal it to the audience first. Other than that, direct overhead shots are something I really love and often forget to shoot. It's something I try to work into all of my flights now. Try doing it after you first take off to get to a high altitude, or when you land to get back to ground level. Either way, overhead shots are super cinematic and a nice visual contrast to most types of aerial shots. Once you're done flying and you have your footage ready to grade, I suggest keeping it simple, especially with footage from the Mavic, being that it has such a tiny sensor. You don't get a lot of information there. There's not a lot of latitude to push and pull the image. I would suggest lowering your highlights a little bit, crunching your shadows a touch, and increasing your saturation slightly. Color grades in general are pretty subjective, so do what looks good to you. That's about it, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of drone cinematography. If you're interested in this type of content and want to see more of it, let me know in the comments below, or if you have some tricks and tips of your own, please share.
Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.